In all honesty, over the course of the three years in my training contract, I did not actually find working and studying to be too bad. I would actually say that for the majority of the time, I found it to be quite manageable. So to give you some background about me, I work at a big pool firm doing external audit. In terms of my exams, I sat the first 12 ACA exams within my first year of being an auditor. So from September 2018 to September 2019, that's when I sat my first 12 exams. What this involved then was having to sit three professional level exams at a time. So that was in the March 2019 sitting and the September sitting. So if you are interested in finding out more about the intensity of three at a time, I have got a blog about this already. So check that out, the link's in the description below and make sure you subscribe because I'll probably turn that into a video very soon. So with a lot of hard work, I managed to pass the 15 ACA exams all the first time. So you may be wondering, and you may actually be in the position yourself where you're having to work full time, you're also having to study, balance your exams and all the other aspects of the ACA, as well as, you know, literally trying to have a life. You're probably wondering how do you do this all and still find it manageable? Well, I can pinpoint this down to a few reasons and that's exactly what I'm going to share with you today. So the first reason I think I found it manageable is because I was enrolled in college days. So I went to Kaplan to study and this was all through my employer and it was all arranged for me. So depending on how many exams I was sitting at a time, what it could actually mean is that I was ending up being in college for at least a week or two in these block periods. So this could have been in college, which was actually really nice in person because then I get to spend time with all the grads. And it is kind of like being back in university or something. And then of course there was the other side during COVID where I did have to study remotely as well. So what I think helped and made it more manageable is the fact that you are given these certain amount of days. So whether you're in college or not, you should also get some personalized learning days. And of course through this you would learn new content, you would practice questions and you would essentially just get set up for the exams. So I think college, although it can be quite stressful and there is a lot to go through and a lot to learn, it is just a nice break from work. So I think that kind of made it more manageable. So my next big tip and probably the biggest reason why I didn't find it to be too bad is because I would actually use annual leave for studying. So of course, yes, you're only given about 25 days, maybe you can buy a few more and it is already limited. But for me personally, and when I look back, I really don't regret having to use those annual leave days for studying. Because what it meant is that I could really just break up the year, kind of fit it around college and things and really have a good chunk off so I could just study and focus on those exams. If you do want to see a timetable of my annual leave for those professional level exams, there's a link in the description below. But just to really stress here, taking time off as annual leave to study is not necessary. It's not what you need to do to pass. You can, of course, really try and balance it all and work and study. But I guess for me, I did just prefer having those blocks. So I was off. And doing all of this, what it also meant is that I did also have time to do my other commitments, such as going to the gym, say five days a week. And it also allowed me to just do other things and still kind of get the revision in that I needed, but also have a break. So even though I did take annual leave to prepare for the exams, it does not mean by any means that I was always really ready for the exams. I mean, to be honest, I guess you can't ever really be super confident for these ones. But what it meant is that I was able to put in 110% effort for all of them without actually burning out. And that's probably the reason why I would definitely recommend it. So I will kind of just say, depending on when your exams are, your employer might not allow you to have as much leave. So for example, for those three professional level exams at a time, I did have two week blocks off. And I guess your employer might not allow you to, depending on your clients and your work commitments. So you may only be given three days, but again, it's best just to really plan ahead and look ahead and see if you can get that holiday booked in. So as I said, I did have two weeks for those professional level sittings. And to be honest, you probably don't need two weeks. Like that is a good chunk of time, especially because with Kaplan, I also had exam preparation as well. So it was literally about four weeks of just intense exam revision. But like I said, it was just my own personal preference and it's something that really worked for me. And it is something that I would highly recommend. So if you wanna know more about how much annual leave to take, well, I am here to help. So like I said, I was doing three at a time and that's why two weeks was actually a pretty good amount of time because you could split it up between those exams. But for example, whereas just doing the one case study final exam by itself, 
I did only take a couple days and I wouldn't really recommend much more than that, especially because you should have the weekends as well. So the moral of the story is it is pretty much exam dependent, depending on what exam it is, if it's a lighter exam, a heavier one, and how many you're sitting at a time. For example, a lighter exam, such as business strategy and technology, I wouldn't recommend having two weeks off for just that one exam. I think a few days is probably enough. That being said though, it does depend on how you find each exam. So if you're struggling a bit more with one exam, then perhaps you do need a bit more time, but with annual leave, you do need to plan ahead. So I think just think through it carefully and kind of see how you found those certificate level prerequisites for those exams, and then just take it from there. So if you wanna know more about the professional level exams, and how they're made up, then check out this video here and that really will break them all down and you should get a better understanding of how much time and what kind of work is required for these. So yeah, to really, really stress here, I did sometimes think that I was being pretty extra for taking this time off for studying, but like I said, I would rather that than any regrets and I literally don't have any regrets because I fortunately did pass all exams first time. It also just meant that I had more balance in my life and I didn't feel like I was giving up my whole life for the ACA and for my job at that time. I still felt like I was able to just live and, you know, have a social life and do things. But of course, nearer the exams, it is naturally much harder and you do kind of switch off from everything else. But overall, it was still pretty balanced and pretty manageable. This, of course, then did have a positive impact on my mental health for sure. And I guess the negative kind of side would be that having all that annual leave, you would kind of feel a bit stupid if you did fail after taking that time off. But honestly, it's just not like that with these exams at all. You could be having a bad day that like you just don't really know. But again, I would rather feel that than have regrets about not trying to take that leave. So did I then take annual leave for every single exam? Well, the short answer is no, I didn't. So those certificate level exams at the start, I didn't really take any annual leave, especially because I just started and I didn't really know how it would be. And there was a lot of training and a lot of different college days and just, there was a lot going on. So no, I didn't. So I guess at this time I was definitely balancing working and studying and it was all very new to me, but I definitely had the drive and I would literally be at the train station, on the train, everywhere and anywhere. I would be pulling that question rank out and I would just be going through those questions. But I guess the good thing is that during this time, like I said, I was in training and things like that. So the audit work hadn't just kicked in too much. So it was still kind of manageable. So then for those professional and advanced level exams, I guess I would only really be able to practice say one or two questions a day. So whereas with the certificate, you can get through so much more in an evening, for advanced and professional, because they're so much longer, you can only really get through one or two realistically, especially if you are going to then debrief it and go through it properly. So that's why, again, I'm just stressing that it just depends on how many exams you're sitting at a time and what exam it actually is. So planning ahead, I cannot stress enough how much that helps. What you really need to actually do is figure out and plan how much time you need for each exam and how much to prepare in order to pass. And then this should kind of also fit around your life and your schedule. So I'm honestly just such a strong believer of fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So to dig more into planning ahead to balance studying and working, what I found that works really well is planning your time actually around the ICAW question bank. So based on how many questions there are, how long they are, etc., that is a good guide to how much time you will need to revise for these exams. So in particular, I found this works really well for the certificate and the professional level. So for all certificate level exams, I would recommend going through at least once, if not perhaps twice for the lighter ones like assurance and law, those question banks. But then for professional, it is a lot harder because there's just so much more in those questions. And it's of course much longer exams and it's no longer multiple choice. So in that case, I would recommend going through at least once if you can for all, but maybe not, for example, AA and BST. It's not as important to go through them all. And then, of course, when you come on to advance, I think it's just really important you do understand the content and you do get enough question practice in, but it is very, very difficult to get in a whole question bank for those. So like I've already said, and I've touched on in the five best ways to minimise exam stress, what I would really highly recommend is purchasing a weekly planner so Monday to Sunday, and you can just literally jot in and slot in all of those questions that you plan to practice on each day. So of course, leave out the ones that you've been told that you're going to study later on in college, 
but the rest of them that aren't being covered just literally fit them in and make sure you've got enough time for them all and as well it's important to schedule catch-up days because you just don't want to end up falling behind you're getting really really overwhelmed but yeah my weekly planner i kid you not it just got me through that aca i know in this video i'm really stressing about how you know you can make it manageable and things like that but i really just don't want you to be under the impression that i didn't find it overwhelming at all at any point so studying and working it wasn't a walk in the park but i did those steps to kind of make it more manageable yes so the time i think where i found it most overwhelming is during the advanced level stage so my cr and sbm exams got postponed back a month due to covid so they got pushed back and so instead of being in july they were now in august and what that meant then is straight after those exams, I didn't really get any time to unwind before the case study. So I kind of just went straight into it. Oh, and not to mention during this moment, I really did think that I'd failed that corporate reporting exam. So yeah, it was just not, not a great time. And at that point as well, as part of the level seven apprenticeship route to find out more details here, what that meant is that I actually also had to do the project report as well. So there was quite a lot going on and I was also trying to do my gateway review and yeah, it was just very, it was overwhelming. And on one of my audit jobs, it was a year end. So of course, what that means is that it is literally a busy season. So you are working a lot and you're working pretty hard. Oh, and on top of that project report, there was also the key skills and behaviors tracker and also the training log. So yeah, there was just honestly a lot at this point, but again, just splitting it all up, planning your time, that is just how to make it more manageable. And another tip actually that isn't in the full blog is that I would also recommend really just being open and honest with your managers and team who are on the job because if they know that you've got exams, they're hopefully more likely to understand what that's like because hopefully everyone's been in that position already and they should hopefully be more lenient and kind of let you finish on time rather than consciously making you stay later and working later during those periods. To summarize then, study and working, it isn't easy, but you can definitely take steps to make it much more manageable. So like I said, I don't regret taking annual leave at all, especially because I did in the end get all 15 first time passes. But I guess the good thing is that when I look back, I don't feel like in the past three or however long years, I don't feel like I had to give up my whole life for the ACA. But yeah, honestly, it was just really, really worth it for me. So if planning and balance and things like that is something that you're into, which I'm sure the majority of us are, then it's definitely something that's worth thinking about. If you are then thinking of taking annual leave, the biggest tip is just make sure you book it off early, as early as possible. And just so there's no kind of conflicts or issues with any other engagements at the same time. So thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful and I hope there are a few tips in there that you can take away with you. So if you did find this insightful, then please give me a like. Any questions, I will be more than happy to answer. So drop them in the box below. And then as you know, I am posting weekly videos now and I've got so many more videos to share. So make sure you do subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again soon.